Hello gamers, uh, Pet here. Welcome to my second attempt to record this tutorial. I, I was, I did a video before. It was pretty good, but it was 23 minutes long. I, I was able to talk about Pegasus, which is a really useful and easy to use asset for 23 minutes. <laughs> so I decided to just record this whole thing again. So welcome guys to another Unity asset review or tutorial. I like to, I, I love Unity assets. Uh, and I like uh, to show them to you, to show you how you can use them, uh, and so on. So just uh, just to avoid if I tend to ramble again, check the link in the description. Go, go to gamerpad.com. Every time I write an, uh, I, I make a video about a tutorial, uh, you know, an asset. I also write a written article about it because you can just skim to it and see the settings there and whatever I used, uh, and that's useful for a lot of people. So anyway. Uh, let's uh, let's 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 dive in. <laughs> we Pegasus is basically an, an Unity asset developed by Adam Goodrich. Hopefully, I pronounced his name uh, right. Um, he's the same uh, developer that created the Gaia, which is the amazingly useful and popular asset that allows you to create procedural terrain, uh, which I already covered. So again, check the link in the description. Uh, uh, we also have a complete terrain shader, which is a shader for the terrain, and Jenna, which is doing other stuff. But trying to cut out the time, I'm going to move forward. Again, uh, this terrain has been uh, created using Gaia, actually. It's, again, totally procedural uh, generated. And I thought that, hey, it's going to be a good point to showcase what Pegasus is using uh, a terrain generated in Gaia. So what is Pegasus? It's basically a, f a tool that allows you to create flybys and, uh, you know, kind of like cutscenes, basically, because you can create a spline path by using nodes. And then you can tell any object to move on that spline path. And I say any object because you can actually put any objects there. You can put a character uh, and the character will move on that uh, spline. You can actually also trigger animation so your character will kind of move on the spline. But uh, the main purpose is basically you put the main camera to move on the spline itself. So basically you have a flyby. And I'm actually going to, in case you want to close the video, uh, uh, Real fast, I'm going to show you how to use Pegasus in like one minute. Uh, you right click Pegasus and Pegasus Manager. Uh, we specify the camera over here. Uh, in this case, it's, it's already there. Uh, so that's useful. Uh, we want it to be looped. Uh, we want it to play on start. I'm going to go later into what this means. Check height terrain. It's going to check where I click uh, and go, what, what it will collide with. And okay, let's just do it. We already see the some keyboard settings over here, which which is great actually. So click, click, click. Yeah, you you have to be a little bit careful on when you, when you click because maybe the raid case is not going to be uh, perfect. But if we move a little bit down, as you can see, uh, uh, it's already checking the collision with the terrain and it's keeping the nodes at 1.8 height, which is the average human height, basically, because it, they are, it's kind of like trying to simulate a uh, walk by, right? As you can see, it, it was this easy. So the fact that those nodes are game objects, I can just use your def default Unity stuff and I can press W uh, and I can select this point of interest and I can just move it down. And what's great about this whole thing is that I can't move it down further because again, it's checking with the collision and that's really, really useful. And I can actually overwrite uh, that setting over here. And if I do this, as you can see, I can do it. So don't get, uh, uh, you know, too scared if you want to have flexibility because you can have it. I'm just going to leave the path uh, like this for now. And for the demoing purposes, I'm just going to hit play. And we are already moving on the path which have just created. So thank you guys for watching this, but <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to end the video. I still have like a lot of talking to do uh, of settings and other adventure stuff and uh, so on. So, but this is basically how you use guys. It's easy. It's really that easy uh, to, to use it straightforward, right? But another thing that is kind of important right now, the camera is facing uh, di the direction of the path, as you can uh, see. But if we go to each, uh, each point of interest node, we can actually specify a target and we move from path to a target and we already have this kind of like uh, another thing that we can uh, we can modify. And if we use this, we can actually tell it to 
look at various objects so maybe you have like something uh to showcase you know like a house or a character or whatever you want uh to showcase uh you can actually do this uh, like um, like this now something that i really really love about this is that you know i had projects in the past where i was um you know creating splines you know paths that were so long that they were having like 200 and 300 uh points and you really need to create many of them and you you want to do this pretty easily and uh, adam has been kind enough to add shortcut keys and that's great if i press control and i'm pressing the home button or the end button i can actually move between the nodes and that's kind of great now another thing that i want to have maybe control so i don't touch the mouse it's basically to create the target thing so right now i'm not touching the mouse again but i am going to touch the 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 arrow keys from my keyboard so i'm pressing control shift and i'm now like i'm moving a character in in a in a, in a game i moved uh, this like this so i'm going to press control and to go to the next one control shift uh, and i'm already drawing stuff like this so again as you saw it's pretty useful to uh move around and uh, you know pretty easy to move around and create this kind of target nodes uh let's also go to this one control shift uh, uh like this and do it in a general direction like this and going to go like this I, i'm not sure why it's showing it so close it didn't do it uh, in the last video anyway and if i press uh, play right now as you can see it's going to look at at the rock basically and that's super nice and super useful now let's move to other settings another thing that i want to specify is basically this frame rate thing that actually <laughs> i ignored it the first time i saw it and it basically caused me something like more than three hours of what the hell is going on not actually work but rendering time uh, and this is story time, which basically it's making my videos to be too long. <laughs> um, I was using uh, Pegasus to create various paths. Um, and uh, yes, I will show you how you can jump from another to another path when you reach the end of the camera. Uh, and basically I was using the VR Panorama Pro Renderer 360 plugin, which is a, an asset that allows you to uh, <clears throat> capture 360 videos, uh, screenshots basically, that those screenshots will be turned into a 360 video. Uh, and I counted how long uh, the path was and as you, as we can see here in the statistics the distance is this and the uh, seconds it's 11 and I basically opened up the calendar and I was like okay I have three, uh, 30 frames per second it's 11 let's say, it, say that it's, it's 11 seconds uh, multiplied by 30 frames per second okay I need 330 frames uh, to record basically and that that's what I was inputting into the VR Panorama Pro Renderer 360 plugin uh, okay so uh, okay I, I pressed the rendering button uh, the camera was moving around everything seemed fine until that my video was like 11 seconds long but my path was finishing in something like five seconds I was like okay what the hell is going on and you do need to specify the frames over here also even if you're using stuff like that even if you are using um, the helios plugin or the uh, vr panorama pro uh, six whatever uh, in the future this thing might actually disappear uh, but until then keep uh, this in mind so another thing that i love about uh, pegasus uh, especially as a guy that created paths that are very very long and a lot of paths require a lot of tinkering and see where they go you have this vis visualization thing and i selected the the game uh, screen and if i scrub to this i can already see the movement so i don't have to click play i can already preview the movement over here and this is something that's very amazing also if i go and select any of the points of interest i can actually preview them so i can tinker with them so you can do something like this uh, and if I multi if I move this, as you can see, I'm already seeing a preview, and this is like insanely useful, as you can see. Beautiful. Let's actually uh, move this back, and if I click play, it's so romantic and so you know like I, I can create a walking simulator for me and just relax to the woods 
without having to go outside. So, what else is uh, there to showcase? Uh, every point of interest, as I've said, has these uh, these settings. Uh, and another important thing is the speed that you can select over here, or you can just drag and drop this uh, number. As you can see, the the total duration of the of uh, of the path is already being updated here. And if you look over here, is uh, you also see this color specifying that it's very very fast there because it's with red. Uh, so that's also like a good uh, good idea. Like to you see, if if you look around over here, we can already see that. Hey, okay, I have a problem here. It's too fast. So you can come and uh, specify a new speed. Now, one thing that I don't really like, and this comes more for a suggestion for Adam if he's going to watch uh, this video. If I don't, if I select all the points, I this the the point of interest doesn't they don't uh, multi object editing not supported. Uh, you might say you don't really need that, but I kind of need it because I wanted to change the speed. The default speed to multiple nodes, something like 100 nodes, and I had to go to each of them to change them. Uh, and I don't know if there is an easier way to do it, and I was kind of insane to do it. So uh, that's something that I would like. Uh, and again, you also have those utilities that allows you to just click and move uh, to the uh, to the next node. And you can also add a POI before. As you can see, it was already added there. Uh, add another B1 before and that's also like incredible useful right so uh, let's actually um, delete some of the nodes as you can see it's already uh, updating the the whole thing let's move uh, this side to be down where it belongs and I want to change the uh, the node to be single uh, sh shot right basically the fly through it's not going to be looped so we have three settings over here Quit application, you know, stop the flight through basically to just stop everything. Quit application and play the next Pegasus. So we can actually create multiple um, multiple splines. And I'm going to press F2 to rename this spline one. Let's actually right click Pegasus at Pegasus Manager. Uh, it's already created at 000, and that's great. <laughs> uh, and let's go to the shore over here. And I'm I can just press Control and click, click, click click kind of not the, the the spot but where i wanted it but that's uh, that's uh, decent enough and i'm also going to uh to create this single shop and these guys join to stop fright one thing to keep in mind is that you want uh, if you have if you have multi multiple uh paths like this that are using the same target object you want to uncheck this play on start because then it's going to create a conflict with the other <coughs> with other um, uh paths basically and it will just uh create a conflict right so let's uh, press f2 spline number two and uh, uh yeah the settings are good in general but we are going to go to the last node of this uh one and uh, to the to the actually spline manager and we are going to drag and drop this over here so as you saw this uh, line over here the yellow it's suggesting that it's going to jump from there to here and it's going to continue on this path now, uh, you know, to save time, I'm going to not show it to you yet, but I'm going to show you something else that you can do uh, with Pegasus. I'm going to create a third spline and we are going to name it uh, spline uh, three. And we are going to click here, here, uh, let's go over here, click, select it, click. Ah, <laughs> wrong, wrong spot, <laughs> wrong spot, dude. He doesn't like the collision stuff. I, I, I can just disable it and just, uh, or I can just move it myself. But I, this, this way is good almost. But it, it doesn't matter. What I want to show you actually is the fact that, uh, let's rename it spline tree. And let's create a cube and just reset it that I, I don't care where that cube is I don't want to see it and we are going to select the spline tree and we are going to to put a cube there and if you are going to click play uh, you are going to see that the cube is going to move around 
like crazy we are going to jump soon to the shore as you can see and the cube is moving on the spline as you can see there beautiful beautiful but but let me show you something else that you can do with this let's uncheck <coughs> let's uncheck this uh, so the cube will not automatically play but then you will be like huh, how will you be able to trigger this so if we check any node any node we can actually we have these scripts here called triggers i'm going to show you basically something like this you can drag and drop it and you can actually start an animation an actual animation when you reach a node uh, so let's actually remove it because i don't uh, want that but let's actually trigger control pegasus and i'm going to specify uh this the cube the spline tree and action at the start play pegasus action at the end stop pegasus i don't want my cube to stop moving i want it to move indefinitely uh, until the end of time so uh, let's just do it like this the cube will not actually start but it will only start when the camera will reach that first node as you can see the cube is not there but when the camera will, will reach uh, here uh, okay oh yeah, yeah it's it's on this node as you can see the cube just started so basically with these uh, triggers you can actually influence a lot of stuff so this is kind of uh, almost everything another thing that i want to show you is the pegasus defaults we were which are all the settings or the, the keyboard shortcuts that pegasus has that you can change yourself so basically this is the show this is me showcasing pegasus and um these are some of the stuff that i will want to be implemented in pegasus uh based on the my older experience with a similar tool uh that will that it that we that i used uh so basically again this is like uh yeah i would love I, I would love to be able to change the speed to multiple nodes at the same time second uh right now the trigger system is a little bit limited maybe or maybe i don't know all the stuff that the trigger system can do but what i would love and just an, an integration like that would be amazing the integration with playmaker imagine if you are able to trigger a playmaker event when you reach a node basically you will be able to do everything only only with that right because playmaker can do state machines and send events you know you you will be able to just reach at uh, at at a node and just save the game just like that or trigger smoke lights and whatever you want uh so that would be really amazing uh and i believe i had other suggestions but i forgot but it, 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 these are like my core uh core ones uh, so yeah i managed to make this video into 18 minutes down from 26 <laughs> so thank you guys for watching this uh, don't forget to go to gamerpad.com and if you want to buy this uh, asset click the link in the description uh and you know subscribe if you want to see more unity previews tutorials and other gaming related stuff so thank you guys uh, for watching this see you soon goodbye